Welcome back everyone to Learning by Teaching. Today we're in Dynamics and we're going to solve problem 1525, okay? It says, the balloon has a total mass of 400 kilograms including the passengers and the ballast. The balloon is rising at a constant velocity of 18 kilometers per uh, hour. When H is equal to 10 meters, if the man drops the 40 kilogram sandbag, determine the velocity of the balloon when the bag strikes the ground. Neglect the air resistance, okay? So what we have over here is that we have our air balloon is going at this velocity of 18 kilometers per hour. And when this height h is equal to 10 meters, we're going to drop our 40 kilogram sandbag and we will want to determine what's the velocity when this happens, okay? So like always, the first thing that I always like to do is just write out my givens. So I'm going to write out the mass, which is equal to 400 kilograms. However, so we have two masses, I'm going to write this as the mass total. Then we have that the velocity is equal to 18 kilometers per hour. And we, what, we, what I always like to do is convert these units into our usual units, so meters per second. So there is a thousand meters in one kilometer. And there is also in one hour, there is a total of 3600 seconds, okay? So we're going to convert this and when we plug this into our calculator, let's check what we get. Okay, so we get a total of five meters per second. So we have a velocity of five meters per second. All right, so now that we have this velocity, we, I'm gonna keep going with our givens. So that was my velocity. I'm giving the age at the time that I'm interested is equal to 10 meters. And finally, I'm giving the mass of the bag. So I'm gonna put it as S for sandbag is equal to 40 kilograms, okay? So these are my givens. How are we gonna try to approach this problem? So we're going to approach this problem by basically utilizing the linear momentum and impulse equation. So as we can see for this equation, well, we are able to have the mass and the initial velocity. Now we want to find the velocity at the end. So this will be the variable that I try to solve for. I also have the mass. However, these forces, we don't know it yet, but maybe with a free body diagram, we can conclude them, that we're also missing the time that we're interested on. We have the height, but we don't have the time. So the first thing that I would like to do is let's just do a small free body diagram so we understand how many forces we have in this object. So we will have a free body diagram. And this free body diagram is basically our balloon. It looks something like this. Not very nice draw, but we get the picture. Okay, now what forces are, are acting on this balloon? Well, first of all, we have the weight and the weight is going down, right? However, we should have an upward force that we're going to call it thrust. So this is our force T, okay? Now, these are the only two forces I have. So therefore, I know which forces to put in my integrals, okay? My summatory for our impulse. The other thing that, as I mentioned before, that we need to find is this final time that we are very interested on. Now, in this case, the final time that we're interested on, in this case, we will think of it as, uh, well, we first need to think of this as the time when my sandbag was dropped from 10 meters, okay? So if we use kinematics, well, we have a, fa a falling object, a free falling object that we can utilize our kinematics equation from previous chapter and find how much time it took, right? So we know that the displacement, the final displacement has to be equal to the initial displacement plus the initial velocity times the time plus one half the acceleration multiplied by the time square, okay? So 
for our sandbag, when we are dropped from here, well, what happened is that it has to travel from here all the way to my negative 10 meters, right? So we have negative 10 is equal to the initial, well, if we assume that this is negative 10, that means that we are thinking of this as zero. So my initial position was zero plus the initial velocity. Well, the initial velocity was equal to five meters. So we're going to have five meters T plus, well, basically minus one half the acceleration 9.81, which is gravity multiplied by T squared. Okay. So now that we have this, what I'm going to do, well, what we see is that we have uh, our variable time is in, it's a square. Therefore, I'm going to apply the quadratic uh, formula. So first of all, I would like to have this as zero is equal to, so I'm basically, uh, I'm going to simplify this equation a little bit, put it on my terms in one side. So the first thing is that I would like to multiply um, the one half with the 9.81 and this should give me a negative 4.905 t squared then I should have plus 5 t plus 10 right so if we move this 10 to the other side will become positive and we have our equation then we can say okay from here we can say that t has to be equal to, and we're going to apply quadratic formula. If you don't know and you can Google, we'll have minus B. So we will have, what we will have is minus five plus or minus the square root of my five square minus four multiplied by A, which is negative 4.905, multiplied by C, which is positive 10, and then all in the square root and all of this divided by two times a which is two times negative 4.905 okay so we're going to get two answers so from here we're going to get that the first time is equal to negative 1.006 and the second time that i get is equal to positive 2.026 this is our in seconds all right so obviously we cannot just drop a bag and travel 10 meters in a negative uh, time, right? So we don't take this one into account. We will now start working with our time when the bag drop was equal to two seconds. Okay. So now that we found the time, the let's find out if we have the entire element for this equation. So we have, the mass, we have the velocity, we have the time. However, we don't know all my forces. And what I mean by that is that we know the weight, the amount of the weight of this. However, we don't know what this T is. But what we can do is utilize my linear momentum and impulse to find that T. And this is how. So we're going to start by applying that the mass. So the mass, which is equal to 400, multiplied by the velocity, which is equal to 5, plus the integral from zero to t. Now this t is a random t before we drop the bag. And then we have the t, the force is equal to t, the positive t that we have in here, dt, okay? Then we have minus the, four, the negative weight force from zero to the same t time, multiplied by the weight, well the weight is 400, kilograms multiplied by 9.81 okay dt and this has to be equal to the mass again which is 400 multiplied by 5 again why is this velocity 5 is because we're assuming that we haven't dropped the bag yet so our velocity stays constant if we subtract these two terms from both sides therefore we're gonna end up and we apply our integrals we end up t multiplied by time minus the 400 times 9.81 that gives me a total of 3924 multiplied by t has to be equal to 
zero okay so we eliminated this and this from both sides if we we what we can say in here is that we're going to cancel oops we're going to cancel this t and this t from our time this is a random time we don't know then my trust t the force is equal to 3924 3, newtons okay so this is basically the force that my air balloon the air balloon is pushing the upward okay the upward force now that we know this force what we can do is well let's try to solve for my velocity but when we're dropping the sandbag okay so we're going to apply the same formula however we drop the sandbag therefore we don't have 400 kilograms anymore we'll have 400 kilograms minus the sandbag well the sandbag was 40 kilograms so this ends up being 360 multiplied by 5 that's the initial plus the integral from 0 to t2 right so we have t2 which is our 2.026 of t well we figure out the 3 is equal to 3924 minus the integral from 0 to t2 of our weight which is 360 multiplied by 9.81 and this has to be equal to my weight 360 multiplied by the well, the final velocity, which is what we're trying to find, okay? So, the first thing, 360 times 5, gives me 1,800, plus the integral from 0 to T2, which is um, this first integral, will give me a total of 7,950, minus the integral of my weight from 0 to T2, will give me a total of... 7,155 and all this has to be equal to our 1,800 again I'm sorry not 1,800 again 360 multiplied by my velocity my final velocity which is what we're trying to find if we solve for my final velocity we're going to end up having our 1,800 plus the 7,950 minus 7,155 all divided by 360 and when we do that we will end up having a total velocity final velocity of 7.21 and this should be in meters per second just like our previous velocity okay so this is the final answer for our problems i hope you guys like the video please push the like button subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one